Right then guys, it's PSL here and I'm here for part 18 in my Motorsport Manager Let's Play. And I'm here with another post commentary because, well, obviously I asked you guys in the last episode, which was also a post commentary, um, what you thought about me doing a post commentary for future parts. And one person commented saying that they didn't mind, one was against it and one was for it. So, basically a pretty even distribution, so I just decided, you know what, let's do another post commentary. I mean... Fundamentally, if around 100 people watched and only 3 people, or if only 2 people commented that they were against it, I assume it must be okay. But either way, I want to do a post commentary for the next couple of episodes because obviously, as you will have seen on some other F1 YouTubers channels, Motorsport Manager on the PC is coming out in around a month. So I really want to get this series done on the app before I move on to the PC game. I mean, assuming I can run it, but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to. I mean... It's built off a of Football Manager and I can run Football Manager so I should be able to run that just fine. So yeah, I want to get this series done so we can move on to the PC version of the game and thus to get this series done quickly I'm going to do post commentaries. So in the last part we saw that I ended my time in Tier 2 and now we've moved up to Tier 1 in the World Grand Prix Championship. And looking at the calendar it's actually very similar to that of the real life F1 season. I mean, starting in Australia, the European mid-season, broken up by Canada, of course. I mean, it's all here, really. It is, quite simply, it's a slightly shortened version of the recent F1 season's calendar. Now, back in part 16, there was a comment once again to change the name of the team to PSL BMW. So, do you know what? I thought I would. I've been talking about it for so long that I have changed the team name to PSL BMW. We've gone back to our old logo, the double checkered flags, because there's nothing that was similar to the Bavarian flag or anything Bavarian really, or an aeroplane. So I just went to the old logo because there's nothing BMW linked there. And I also have stuck with the same colour, the silver colour, because it's, I guess, the colour that BMW would use. I mean, I guess BMW would kind of use white. I mean, that's the colour they went with when they were with Sauber and Williams back in the day. So... I've gone with silver because it's the closest to a colour that BMW would approve of. Into the pre-season we had our first Dilemma car upgrade. And once again I went with the cheaper one, the 3% aerodynamic upgrade as quite simply right now we do not have a lot of money. We're over a million in debt. So that's why I went for the cheaper one. And then later on in pre-season I had the exact same options and I went with the exact same choice for the exact same reasons. Also, just before we head into our first race in Tier 1, I got rid of Jalen Fredgale. He was the worst of our two drivers and his contract ran out, so I thought it was a good time to get rid of him and get an experienced Tier 1 driver, Rihanna Girard. And she was better than Billy Dan, so we've made her our driver number one, because as we saw last season, the driver 1-2 structure is a fantastic way to make money, and right now, that is really what we need to do. So into the first race in this mega 16 race season and of course the opening race was in Australia and qualifying in Australia saw Rihanna Girard meet the 5 million dollar sponsor objective which was to finish in the top 5 as amazingly in our dog of a tier 1 car she qualified second. However to compensate for that a more realistic result Billy Dan our new driver number 2 qualified in 16th. Into the race and there is heavy rain on lap 12, which meant that most of the field, including us, pitted instantly. It stopped raining by the end of the race, but no one pitted, as Rihanna finished 3rd and Dan 6th. Both drivers gaining a few places once the rain fell, as others came in a lap later, which meant we did jump some of those guys. The Constructors' Championship, and amazingly, we're in 2nd. I have no idea how, considering the fact our car is... Horrific, and I'm not even really competing to win the championship this year. I am next year, but this year I wasn't even expecting to be near the top. And at that moment in time, Zach Autosport were ahead and Fire Cruiser were behind. The second race of the season was at Malaysia, and qualifying saw Rihanna Girard qualify in third, getting another $5.4 million sponsor bonus. And even better, Billy Dan was in a respectable 10th. And considering his driving statistics and how bad the car is, is really good. The race started wet but got very dry very quickly and with 4 laps to go, we pitted for the dries but we gained very little from it as whilst everyone else stayed on the wets, 
we just maintained our positions while doing a different strategy. Rihanna came in 5th, the same position she was in before she pitted for the dries, while Dan finished all the way down in 12th. So still a decent race but we dropped to 3rd in the Constructors Championship behind Fire Cruiser. Race 3 at Bahrain and we qualified behind the sponsor objective which was only to get us to the top 8 and that's because we qualified in 10th and 18th which is kind of what I was expecting prior to heading into the season but considering how well we've done the past couple of races, yeah that's quite bad. In the typically boring and bone dry Bahraini Grand Prix, we made up places from where we qualified to finish 3rd and 6th, meeting the race sponsor objective to get $4.5 million. Impressively we moved back up to 2nd in the Constructors Championship as Zack Autosports went from 1st to 4th, even behind Team Hamilton. Qualifying at China saw us meet yet another sponsor objective as Rihanna Girard came 5th, with Billy Dan down in 11th. Again not too bad considering how shocking the car is, I mean the car rating at the moment is only 84 out of 99 and considering we're in the top championship, or at least the top tier of championships, to have a car that's rated 84 and to qualify 5th and 11th, yeah that's impressive. Once again we had another very boring race right up until the very end as Rihanna Girard lost 8th place on the run to the line which is quite unfortunate but it's really bad considering that we needed to finish in the top 8 to meet the sponsor bonus so coming 9th meant we actually lost out on all that money. Billy Dan finished in 13th in what was a extremely disappointing race for us. And into the Constructors Championship we dropped a third behind Hamilton but we're still way ahead of where I expected us to be in our first season in Tier 1. Race 5 and entering the European part of the season with the Spanish Grand Prix and in qualifying we qualified 7th and 14th, missing the sponsor bonus and just generally having a lacklustre day there. However in the race a storm came in on lap 8 and Rihanna Girard moved up into first as our pit crew are quicker than any other team so our pit crew still even moving up to tier 1 are still the saving grace and are still phenomenal. However with a few laps to go it dried up and moving on to the slicks Rihanna Girard dropped to second. And that's because the person in first got the undercut on us and pitted a lap earlier. But because of that they had no pace on the last lap as their tyres were long gone. Unfortunately Rihanna just about couldn't pass them in time but still we got second so nearly a win there. Meanwhile Dan had an equally good race considering he's the driver number 2 to come 7th. After that race I was offered a car upgrade and actually this time I took the bigger one, a 6% design upgrade and that's because we've made so much money this season, I mean we get 5 million dollars if we meet the qualifying bonus, 4.5 million dollars if we meet the race bonus so if we have a good race weekend we make 10 million dollars so we can easily afford a car upgrade and in fact this car upgrade did put our cars rating up from 84 to 85. Race 6 and the illustrious Monaco Grand Prix finally arrived and in qualifying the track started wet but dried out towards the end of the session. Rihanna had the chance to do another lap but Billy didn't unfortunately. And because of that, that meant that Rihanna Girard was able to take advantage of the drying track to qualify 4th, with Dan down in 20th and last position, and at the notoriously hard to overtake Monaco circuit, that could be an issue for him. Of course, as I just said, it is extremely difficult to overtake at Monaco, thus we had to be clever with our strategy. So what we did was we stuck on the soft tyres and then undercut the rest of the field which was on the hard tyres, and that played to our advantage massively as we got such a big jump on all of the hard runners, it was ridiculous. And Rihanna was able to move into first just by sticking up on the soft tyres longer than most other people would dare to and by going so quickly that she would jump the people who stuck out on the worn hard tyres through the pit stops. It was an amazing strategy and only a really quick driver like Rihanna could make it work. And even a storm on the last lap of the race couldn't stop Rihanna Girard from taking PSL BMW's first win together and our first win in general in Tier 1 and in the World Grand Prix Championship and at Monaco of all places 
and I think we've won at Monaco before, but in Tier 1, that is extra special. Meanwhile, our driver number 2, Billy Dan, he did very well to come from last place to ninth because he did the exact same strategy, which as we saw of Rihanna worked wonders, and amazingly, after this result, Rihanna Girard even leads the Drivers Championship. So we're really exceeding my expectations for this season. I mean, I was not expecting to be competing for any championship this season. And even better, in the Constructors' Championship, we overtook Hamilton. After that race had finished, our head of aerodynamics contract ran out. So because of that, I thought we'd have a fresh start to our engineers, as I pulled the plug on the other two engineers' contracts to get a brand new engineering department. And because of the brand new and better engineers we got, that meant our car rating went up to 86 just on that department shakeup. Our manufacturing facility, which we started building last episode, also finished its construction, so we employed 10 more people in that department, and so our car rating went up to 88. Back across the Atlantic to Canada, and qualifying there saw us finish 4th and 11th, and most of those places were lost while it was raining as we set our times when the track was bone dry, and a few people were able to capitalise on the dampening track but not as many as could have done. I mean, despite that defiance of logic of people going quicker than us despite the fact it was raining, we did still meet the sponsor objective to get another $5.4 million. Into the race, and once again ignoring the hard tyres, much like in Monaco, worked wonders for us, as Girard finished first for the second race in a row. I mean, I'm just blown away by how well she's doing. I know she's a driver number one, and I know we just recently got quite a big upgrade to our car from the previous race, but to win two races in a row in our first season in Tier 1 is mind-blowing, and Billy Dan finished down in 7th, which is perfectly acceptable considering he's a driver number 2. Race 8 and the halfway mark of the season saw me enter my home race in Great Britain, although a track that is very different to that of Silverstone. Anyway, typically it started raining mid-qualifying, and Rihanna set a time while the rain was falling to get her third. That is where she finished in qualifying, while Dan was down in 13th place. A boring and yet surprisingly consistently dry race saw us finish third and seventh, no surprise which way round, with Rihanna in between both fire cruiser drivers. Now thanks to Rihanna Girard meeting so many sponsor objectives this season and thus making us so much money, we were able to afford the final aerodynamic headquarters upgrade with $5 million to spare. And considering that upgrade will take 8 races to finish, it will be done in time for next season. Race 9 and qualifying in Germany was disappointing to say the least, with Rihanna Girard finishing all the way down in 9th, missing the sponsor objective, and Dan came last once again. And in the race, things didn't get much better, as Billy Dan retired on lap 9 with a mechanical failure, although he was in a low grid position, but it's still bad to see. We did finally get some good news at the end of the race, as Rihanna Girard finished in 5th, which is good because she met the sponsor objective to come 8th, and it's unlikely we're going to win the Constructors' Championship this year, so all we need to focus on is her Drivers' Championship and making tons of money, which she's definitely doing the latter. Round 10 took us to Belgium, and in qualifying, we ended up on pole position. Rihanna Girard taking pole position, I'm still staggered by how quick she's been. Honestly, she's been uber quick, with Billy Dan down in 7th. In between our two drivers, we had one Fire Cruiser driver, one Zach Autosport driver, one Fong Motorsport driver, one Harry Anto, and one Hamilton driver. Which is interesting and it shows how quite a few of the teams seem to be adopting the driver 1, driver 2 strategy, it doesn't just seem to be us. Lap 12 and it started raining which is a massive surprise in Belgium, it never, jeez it never rains in Belgium. But anyway, we were the first team to pit onto the wet tyres and this did help us slightly as Rihanna Girard finished in 2nd place, slightly higher than she was prior to pitting in for the wets I believe, while Billy Dan came 8th. So overall, quite a good race for the team, although both of our drivers did lose one place from where they qualified. Race 11 was hosted by Italy, and the Italian Grand Prix qualifying session saw our drivers finish in 4th and 13th, so not the best day for us. 
At the end of lap 18, we took the lead of the race, having pitted for the dry tyres a lap earlier than most, and we gained quite a lot of time from it. Which is something we've done many other times this series, it does seem to be quite an easy thing to do, where once the rain starts falling, the AI just like to stay out a lap longer than is preferable, and we've gained tons of time in tons of races from that. I knew that strategy call was good, but I wasn't expecting it to be this good, as Rihanna Girard from that was able to win the Italian Grand Prix, while Dan, who did the exact same strategy as Girard, finished all the way down in 12th, but once again, Billy Dan, we saw how dominant he was last season. We know he's a good driver. Is he a good tier 1 driver? I don't know, but he is a driver number 2, so considering he is a tier 2 driver, considering he is a driver number 2, we can't really expect wonders from him on a consistent basis. As a result of that race and some of the previous races, we had amassed a bank balance of $25 million. So I decided to buy the final headquarter upgrade for our design facility. And as I found out in the previous part of this series and also as a comment taught me, the pre-season counts as three races, so even though this headquarter upgrade will take eight races to finish, because the pre-season counts as three races, it will be done in time for the next season. Race 12 and moving back to Asia and back to Singapore, a track which we have visited a number of times previously this series. Now much like Mercedes in real life, I simply cannot explain the lack of pace as a team we have at Singapore. And that's because at the end of qualifying we came 11th and 17th. No surprise which way round they are, but what is a surprise is just how far down the field they are. To make matters worse, in the race Dan took a drive through penalty for causing a collision, which is just great to see from our driver number 2 really supporting the driver number 1 there. But anyway, at the end of the race we finished an OK 5th and 16th and it's still good enough to meet the sponsor objective and that is the main thing for this season. Now after this race, Billy Dan's contract ran out and I didn't renew it but considering the previous race he got a drive through penalty, yeah I didn't really have much reason to renew his contract but also he is a driver who came from tier 2 so he's not really cut out for tier 1 unfortunately. And I know we can get some better ones now that we are in Tier 1. And looking through the experienced and young drivers, I did get one of our young drivers, Donovan Kendall, as despite the fact he's not fully developed, he is way cheaper than the experienced drivers and was as good as them basically, so we may as well get him because he is the most cost effective option. We've also made him the driver number 2 as the driver 1-2 system is generating a ton of money for us right now, so why change it? Race 13 at Japan and Rihanna Girard qualified in 3rd place with Donovan Kendall at his first qualifying session for the team qualified down in 14th place. So a less than perfect start for him but he is jumping in at the deep end and Billy Dan, we've seen previously this series, is a very very good driver so Donovan Kendall, it would be a very big ask for him to instantly fill the shoes of Billy Dan especially when he's been thrown in mid-season. Anyway, into the race and lap 4, Rihanna Girard lost her front wing and had to pit around 2 laps early, so completely ruining the pit stop strategy we had in place. Although shortly after that, the safety car came out, and to add drama to that, Rihanna Girard retired with a mechanical issue, so it's been a dismal race for her, and a dismal race for the team really, because now our entire hopes rest on our driver number 2. However, Donovan Kendall, at his debut race for the team, we put him onto the hards for one of a few times this season, and he did make it work, and in his first race with PSL BMW, finished 4th place, even meeting the sponsor objective, so Donovan Kendall having an amazing result there, and it just begs the question if Rian Girard didn't retire and she was able to do the same strategy of pitting onto the hards, God knows where she could have finished, but Donovan Kendall is certainly impressing me. With only three races left to go this season, we move on to Russia, and qualifying saw Rihanna Girard finish 4th, with Kendall in 10th. And at the end of a typically dull Russian Grand Prix, and in fact a typically dull entire Russian Grand Prix weekend, we did get some excitement literally at the end of the race as Rihanna Girard overtook Chase near the end of the race to take 1st place, with Kendall down in 10th, but still 
Rihanna Girard taking yet another win this season. I'm still stunned by it because I was not expecting to win. Even if she is a driver number one, I was not expecting to take one win this season, let alone three. The penultimate race of the season was the American Grand Prix, and for that we qualified very poorly. Rihanna in 7th and 20th and last place for Donovan Kendall. So in qualifying both drivers missed out on the sponsor bonus, but the race was much better for us with Rihanna Girard taking 2nd and Kendall, much like in the last race, finished in 10th place, grabbing a point for PSL BMW. Now to set up the foundations to win the championship next year, I have invested into the final headquarter upgrade which is the 8th one for the manufacturing facility. This does put us in $12 million worth of debt, but with the end of the season coming, the prize money alone should clear the debt, let alone us potentially getting $10 million from the upcoming Grand Prix weekend, assuming we meet both sponsor objectives. Race 16 and the final race of the season takes place at Brazil, so a very fitting end to the World Grand Prix Championship. Qualifying saw some drama as a storm came in towards the end of the session which massively helped Rihanna Girard to hold on to pole position with Kendall taking a respectable 9th place in qualifying which considering how new he is to the race seat and considering his driver number 2 position is very impressive. Into the race though and more rain came in on lap 7 of the race and Kendall pitted in on lap 8 with Rihanna Girard coming in a lap later than her teammate. This did see us fall down the field but with still loads of others left to pit on the wets, we're by no means out of this race yet. What was even better is the fire cruiser driver Nash weirdly pitted from the lead despite already being on wet tyres. And because they pitted near the end of the race and because they felt the need to fit on new tyres or just repair some damage or something. Rihanna Girard was essentially gifted the lead and subsequent win to the final race of the season in the World Grand Prix Championship, the Brazilian Grand Prix, with Donovan Kendall making up a couple of places from his qualifying position to take 7th place, so overall a fantastic Brazilian Grand Prix and a fantastic end to our first season in Tier 1. Now what is absolutely staggering I mean I guess it's not staggering considering the season we just had, but it's staggering considering this is our first season in Tier 1. Rihanna Girard won the Drivers' Championship in the World Grand Prix Championship. I mean seriously, what an amazing accomplishment. She's won four races this season, and in such a poor car compared to the competition. I mean, the car is okay now, but at the start of the season it was horrific. I mean, even now it is still not really a race winner, but she has done amazingly well so far. In the Constructors' Championship we finished third behind Zach Autosport and the Champions Fire Cruiser. But with us as a team having been so competitive this year, getting four wins, many more podiums and impressive results for both Dan and Kendall with only the rare occasion where they underperformed. I mean Donovan Kendall got fourth place on his first race with the team and Billy Dan, let's not forget, he had a mega race to come from last to ninth in Monaco of all places. So at the end of the season, the governing body of the championship gave us $23 million for our third place finish in the Constructors' Championship, which cleared all of our debts and then some actually. So with that, it's time to employ 10 more people into our newly rebuilt and fully upgraded aerodynamic and design facility, which unsurprisingly moved the car's rating up massively from 88 to 91, a massive step forward and considering we started this season with a car rating of 84, we've come a long way in such a short time. And so with that, it's another season done, the 2024 season is completely finished. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and comment and next time we're going to try to win the World Grand Prix Championship and honestly I have no idea if we will. I hope that we will because I'm kind of expecting there to be three more episodes in this series and if we don't win it next time there's going to be four episodes left in this series but um, aside from that logistical issue it would be amazing to win a Tier 1 Championship and our second time of trying. Anyway yeah guys be sure to leave your thoughts on that and I'll see you guys next time where fingers crossed 
we can win the championship and the next episode will be a post commentary but the final championship will be a live commentary again i'll do five races in one video and then six races in another i don't know which way round but either way the final championship will be live commentary and will hopefully be an epic finale to this series so i'll see you then <laughs>